Louisiana Beer Reviews looks at Guldenberg Belgian Abbey Ale. Here we are at 5.48 a.m. I told you I was going to do that 6 a.m. beer review, my friends. And we are earlier than 6 a.m. Um, okay, I had three cups of coffee. I have not eaten breakfast, and so um, that needs to be taken care of. <clears throat> Expires on... September 13, 2019. Oh my goodness gracious. Unpasteurized, unfiltered, 8% alcohol. I think I saw somewhere they say 8.5. This bottle says 8%. It's uh, called Guldenberg because that's um, like an old chateau, castle type thing, and that's where one of the founders of this Doranc company was born, apparently. Uh, it uses pale, malt, and Haller tall hops and Haller, and they also use the same hops for dry hopping. Okay, um, Beer Advocate says it's a strong Belgian ale, and Rapier says it's a Trapel, or vice versa. I can't remember. Um, they're all saying it's outstanding. 95 out of 100 on Rapier, I think 92 out of 100 out of 100 for the style, something like that. In the 90s, mid to you know 95, and Rape, uh, Beer Advocate saying outstanding. The beer and me. Is saying it's excellent, so not they're more into the A minus to A range. Okay, um, but that's a very small website, and um, there aren't that many reviews there. It's sort of like a little club. But the two big sites, Beer Advocate and Rapier, are giving it very high marks. I've never had it, I bought it at Aquista Paces, and uh. Covington, Louisiana, along U.S. Highway 190 business route. So early, early, you hear the birds. I went outside to get the newspaper, and that's, I was going to do this earlier, like around 5:20, 5:30, but um, I had to read the whole sports page, and there's a lot of information in the sports with NCAA tournament and college baseball and all that. And I got to get to these detective comic books, uh, number 48, 49, and 50. I noticed DC. Um, Warner Brothers, DC, um, they're, all their storylines are wrapping up with number 50, which is a renumber because these books go back into the 700s, 800s. Uh, they they uh, decided to renumber their books recently, kind of like Marvel Comics did where they're rebooting all the time and dismaying everyone, I think. But anyway, enough. And then we got the Magnum. <laughs> For no particular reason, the old can, the more modern can, the 40 ounce bottle, and apparently they're going back to glass. What you know about that? I wasn't prepared to buy a plastic bottle, couldn't bring myself to do that. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, when I went out to get the newspaper, there was a rabbit in the yard. I've seen three rabbits in the last week. Uh, last nine days, I mean. Okay, uh, Whitehead, lots of fierce bubbles, frankly. It's golden. I mean, it's just straight up golden. Golden years. Okay. Don't let them tell you that this beer is. Okay. Oh. It is full in the news. There are some video reviews for it, and I do intend to watch them. <clears throat> I would do this with breakfast, but they don't open. The place I wanted to go doesn't open till 6 a.m., and then that sets you back. And then I was like, you know what, I'll just not drink too much, and then I'll go... I'm on a very empty stomach, and I'll go um, get those biscuits, those egg biscuit and the sausage biscuit. And all that. Okay, but from the aroma, I think it would pair well with that. It's a full bread attack, a full fruit attack, like say Bartlett. I always say that Bartlett pears, but um, a lot of beers um, impart that. <clears throat> Maybe some floral hop resin. And I saw somebody going off yesterday. I was watching a beer review or listening to it. I mostly just listen because um, I don't need to just look at the person hold the beer. And you might do the same thing. 
John Sharon said he listens to my video reviews in the shower. Okay, um, but he was talking about, oh, why would anybody want to enjoy floral hops? And he was just getting really angry about it. Um, this guy was, I can't remember who it was. Um, it has that rich Belgian ale, that full nose, that sort of boozy, sort of fruity, you know, you get into this 8%, you're starting to get the grain husk, which is not super appealing, but it's part of the game with this. So, I mean, there, there is, there must be a thousand bubble screams just racing up the side of the glass. Eh, it's not making any kind of crackle. It's not audible. It's not an audible ale. Okay, let's get into the flavor. My videos tend to be too long. But then I get all excited about the beer and I just want to talk about it. No, 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 blah, blah, blah. Just like I expected. It's the same thing. It's like a fruit bread attack. You get the breadiness, the pale malt. So it's like a white bread. White bread, almost even sourdough. Yes. And the spiciness, like... Now, they add candy sugar to this beer. They said on the website, I was just I was looking at the website. So, there is that. And there's almost like a white pepper. The beer is sweet, but it's not overly sweet. Um, the body's there. Certainly, it's a, I would not say heavy body, but it's in the high medium range. And um, no, it is not cool. I don't need this pullover. I just do the, you know, I, if I wear a Southeastern or UNO or LSU or New Orleans Saints shirt, then I have to wear every cap, you know, or, with the shirt, right? And then with Southeastern, it's numerous, numerous caps. Southeastern Louisiana University established 1925. So, there's a method to the madness. Um, but there's that grain husk. Uh, and like with that Cuvée de, Ca the, uh, Cuvée de Chateau of Castile, there's sort of that chalkiness. And that is not, to me, it's not a great attribute. You get a lot of these high gravity beers and they'll have that chalky undertaste, and I don't know what causes that. It's especially pronounced in your high-gravity lagers, specifically the ones from Europe. I've had these really high-gravity lagers. Most of them are atrocities, like the Boom, uh, and there's another one that's sort of like an exclamation from the same company in, in Czechia, the, in Prague, Praha, and there's the uh, Super Brew 15 from Bucharest, Romania, which is 15% alcohol, and is, I did not finish it. I did not want to go through the same problem that I had with the uh, the um, earthquake 12%. Okay, it's just, it was too chalky. It was too grain husk and horrible. I mean, I did sip it. I said, I'll, I'll take a sip every hour. That was I kept it in the fridge, and I said, that would be my goal. I'll take one sip every hour. And then I got through, like, the fourth hour, and I was like, I can't do it. I know it's going to happen. I'm going to get sick. I just threw it out. And I did the same with the boom and the, whatever that other one was, boom clap or whatever. And um, But they will have that chalky thing, except they're just ghastly, you know, in every way. This, But th I have to be honest, that is not, to me, a benefit. Okay, everybody's saying, outstanding, you know, it's great, it's wonderful, you know. Yeah, is it? Um, I think the Joseph's Brow, that's that Belgian golden ale, which is, what, 6%? from Belgium, sold by Trader Joe's, which is like, I don't know, it's like a dollar seventy-five for one bottle or less, I don't know. That is a really pleasant beer, it doesn't have any of those attributes, you know, it's not a high gravity, it's a elevated gravity, you know, 6% malt liquor type thing, but it's, it's pleasant, you know, it's like really subtle, fruity notes and bread, and um, they don't add the candy sugar. It's just water, barley, malt, hops, and yeast. So it's, you know, like a Ryan Heitzkabat thing. And um, there's no chalkiness. 
and um, I think it's better than this. And that's a discount beer, and this is not discounted at all. It's three ninety nine for a single. The finish is like a mimosa, right? Like the orange juice and the the champagne. Like they'll serve at those buffets, like on Easter Sunday or Christmas Day. Um, it's on the dry side. It's a little, you know, little like a little focus on little puckering. It's very carbonated and prickly in the mouth. Um, the sweetness scale is probably, and this may be a one that's on the Cyclops. They have like 600 beers on there, um, or company, something like that. Oh, some large number. Um, yeah, three out of five uh, sugar cubes, possibly. One and a half out of five hop cones really doesn't come across as bitter at all. It's just um, like pear, a generalized citrus, uh, maybe some sugar in, sugariness. Um, there's booziness, there's alcohol. I um, mean, you can feel it here, especially on the empty stomach. But I mean, I think it would pair well with grits. You know, white hominy grits with some cheese in them, maybe just some shredded cheddar cheese and some black pepper and naturally hot sauce and some onion and scrambled eggs. Because I think those would be like absorbing, right? They would absorb some alcohol and they would offset some of the sweetness. Yeah, you'd want some toast with probably butter, real butter, not margarine. And, um, uh, you know, strawberry preserves type thing. Um, you'd have to have meat with it. Probably bacon would do do quite well or some very hot, you know, the patties, the sausage patties. So, uh, I'm going to say... That the chalkiness is not helping. I have to go with A minus. It's excellent, you know. It's it, it's drink all these dynamite beers. Oh man, there is so much cake sediment. I have to do it before I get off of this and go um, get the food. Um, and I've had a large number of Belgian beers, so it's not like I'm a novice at it or you know un unacquainted with it. I do prefer probably the English ales, you know, if I'm going to drink a strong ale. I'm not opposed, you probably know this, I'm not opposed to, um, or perhaps you know it, I'm not opposed to high gravity beers, if they're good. Lagers, you know, lagers, ales, lagers, ales, either or, I don't care. Um, it, uh... Yeah, it clouded up. It's like milky now, right? So, didn't really change it. Maybe it's a little fruitier. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to say A minus. Um, I'm sorry, that's the best I can do with it. And I hate to be that way. <laughs> yeah, well, once again, bulls don't come at you soft. And, um,. I'm looking over here at Schlitz VSL, uh, you know, uh, and I don't like to say, you know, and uh, those are like little pauses that people, in, they insert in a sentence to um, take up space, but, uh, so uh, again, Schlitz High Gravity VSL, I can go to West Louisiana and get a four pack of this for $2.99, um, doesn't have the chalky undertaste, it's smoother, and uh, it would probably score an A minus as well. So it's your money. You can do what you want. I mean, I'm glad I tried it to give it a review. But I, if I was going to drink an eight percent or above beer, which in actuality I never do, most of the beers I drink on an everyday basis are. I mean, people ask me this: four point three percent alcohol to five percent. That's really what I prefer drinking. Uh, but if I for some reason wanted to drink high gravity beers, I would reach for something like that. I just don't think think this is I can get a twelve pack of Hurricane High Gravity eight point two percent at Rouse's and Metairie for nine seventy nine a twelve pack. 
it's going to be just as good as this. And you say, yeah, but it's a lager, that's an ale. I'm well aware of that. They're both beers, though, and that's that. So, laissez les bon temps roulés with some disappointment. A good, argu arguably excellent beer, but ultimately disappointing product for when you can factor in the price. So, um, that's all I can say about it. And, uh, Y'all come on down to Southeastern Louisiana.